morning, men. I'm JJ Manning with the Soulcon teaching team. And it, you know the drill by now. Uh, grab yourself something to drink, coffee, water, you know, something good and healthy. And grab your copy of God's Word, and we'll get after it this morning. Before we do, let's open with prayer. Lord, thank you for today. God, thank you that we as brothers can unite digitally and, and just share a moment in your word. Lord, we ask that you would just open our hearts and our minds to hear directly from you today. And that, God, we would let your word continually reshape who we are to bring you glory. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, in your copy of God's Word, if you would, turn to John chapter 8. It's a, a very familiar passage of Scripture, and, and we're going to go right to the, the end of uh, the first part of the chapter. In uh, verse 10, it says, Then Jesus stood up again and said to the woman, Where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? No, Lord, she said. And Jesus said, neither do I go and sin no more. This, uh, if you go back and you read the rest of the story, the, this is a woman who was caught in the very act of adultery. And she was brought before Jesus by the religious leaders of the day who wanted to test him. And they, they ultimately wanted him to give his blessing for this woman to be stoned to death for breaking the law of Moses. And uh, I find it very interesting that we, you know, we look at this sometimes and, and we, we always look at it from the perspective of, of being those guys that, you know, we, we're, we're not called to, to pick up rocks and, and accuse other people of sin. And, and that, is, that is awesome. That, that is exactly what Jesus wants us to understand, that we're not called to pick up those rocks and accuse and condemn other people. But the, the problem we run into is, is we like to, to have that rock ready to condemn ourselves over our sins, faults, and failures. And we're just like those Pharisees that there's times we don't extend the grace to ourselves that we would extend to uh, another person. And, and we hold on to the rock. If, if you have a big rock around your house, you can go pick it up, and hold on to it for a while, and, and you'd begin to understand how much weight there is to that rock. But, you know, I, I, I had a visual of this the other day when I was, when I was reading, and, and I thought, man, you know, how, how many rocks have I just picked up over the years and, and where God had forgiven me of something, I still carry the weight and the guilt of that and, and beat myself up with it. And, and I think a lot of us as believers, especially as men, do that because uh, God is, is good to cast our sin as far as the east is from the west to remember it no more. And, and we're going to look at that in Psalm 103. Uh, verse 8 says, The Lord is compassionate and merciful slow to get angry, and filled with unfailing love. He will not constantly accuse us, nor remain angry forever. And I'm going to stop and right there. And, and if you constantly feel the weight of your former sin, that is not coming from God. The, the weight and the, the shame from your, your sin and the life that you lived that is not from God. And God is not going to constantly remind you or accuse you of your faults and failings. He is, and he's bound to his word. He is compassionate and merciful, slow to get angry, and filled with unfailing love. And he will not constantly accuse us nor remain angry forever. He does not punish us for all our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. For his unfailing love toward those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. 
and he has removed our sins far from us as the east is from the west. You know, I, I, I'm coming back to the fact that that's who God is. But we struggle sometimes with letting it go because we have a long memory as well. All, all of those images that we put into our mind. You know, I, I can still remember clear back to being a small child and, and going and seeing my first movie in the theater. Not, not a bad movie, not a sinful movie, but yeah, it was Bambi to be exact. It was uh, on a re-release at that time. I'm not that old, but <clears throat> I can remember that movie from the images I saw as a kid. And I, and I wish I could forget all of the times I've viewed pornography and all the times that, that I had, had done all of these other things but they they play like a loop in our mind if we're not careful. And and I I believe that's why Paul was very uh, emphatic about being transformed by the renewing of your mind in Christ Jesus, that you have to go in and overwrite the the programming that you put in for for you computer guys out there. But for for those of us that aren't really computer savvy, you got to drop the rock. Okay. We, we like to hold on to the rock because we're, we're comfortable with it. That, you know, I'm a sinner. I screwed up. I, you know, we, we like to take ownership of all of those things when God's already forgotten it and he wants us to drop the rock and move on. And, and this gets addressed in Hebrews. And we're going to wrap this up this morning in Hebrews Chapter 12, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight. In the King James Version, it says, let us cast off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. And verse two, the, the very beginning of it, it, it'll wrap this up really nicely for us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Men, identify the rocks in your life that you're hanging on to and let go of them. And the only rock we should cling to is Jesus Christ. Hope you have a blessed day. Stay in the fight. Drop those rocks and run after Jesus. I love you, man. Go in advance. Have a good one.